The Edmonton Oilers' ability to match the offer sheets for Philip Broberg and Dylan Holloway might just come down to Evander Kane. You are Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Thursday edition of Locked On Oilers. I am your host, Nick Zararis. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Oilers their first listen of the day. Locked On Oilers, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and that today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. So today's episode very straightforward. We are going to walk through the steps of Evander Kane's offseason. We're going to talk about Bob Stauffer's report uh, earlier in the week. We're going to talk about how long-term injured reserve works. We're going to talk about whether or not this is even a viable strategy. We're going to talk a little bit more about the offer sheets that Holloway and Broberg signed with the Blues and all of the possible permutations that we can have. So let's start here. Long-term injured reserve is a tool. And I know that there are a lot of fan bases out there that bemoan the usage of long-term injured reserve by a handful of teams. People point at the Tampa Bay Lightning with Nikita Kucherov, who suffered a lower body injury, injured his hip. During that playoff run, the Lightning had the first time they won the Stanley Cup. You have to remember, that season got paused the week of St. Patrick's Day, which is in March. There were no games all of April, all of May, all of June, all of July, the first actual games of the bubble playoffs were August 1st. The Lightning won the Stanley Cup at the end of September going into October. Then Nikita Kucherov knew he was suffering from an injury. He was clearly hurt. The Lightning did not have Kucherov get surgery and get his get treatment for his injury until at the the most charitable interpretation of events would be December. And then it's a five-month recovery. So the NHL season after that started in January of 2021, the last week of January. Pre training camp started January 12th, and then teams started their games about two weeks later. They had a 56-game regular season that went till the middle of April. Excuse me, the end of April. And then game number one. Nikita Kucherov was ready to go. The Lightning went back to back. Kucherov was his usual excellent self. The other examples we know of, Patrick Kane, way back in 2015, the third time the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. He fractured his clavicle in January. He had a 12-week recovery period. And excuse me, he got hurt in February and was diagnosed with about three-month recovery period. February, March. He was ready to go by game number one of the playoffs. The Blackhawks made a handful of trades at the deadline. Patrick Kane comes back. There's no salary cap in the playoffs. Blackhawks go on to win the Stanley Cup. And then the last three years in a row, the Vegas Golden Knights have done this. Then the last three years in a row, the Vegas Golden Knights have done this with Mark Stone. The first time, it was when they acquired Jack Eichel. And that particular instance is going to apply, and we're going to talk about that more with Evander Kane coming up. But they bring Mark Stone, they put Mark Stone on LTIR to acquire Jack Eichel. Eichel comes over. They have to do a whole bunch of cap shenanigans to get the roster cap compliant. That is going to come up in a second, like I just said, for the Oilers. Two years ago, they acquire Ivan Barbashev. They go on to win the Stanley Cup. This past year, they acquired Tomas Hurdle and Noah Hannafin. And lo and behold, Mark Stone was ready to go come playoff time. Now, this is not going away. And there are solutions that people have proposed. You could have a salary capped roster in the playoffs, but the reason that's not a thing, players don't get paid their normal salary during the playoffs. There's winner's purses the further along you go in the postseason, but you are not getting your normal NHL salary. You know, your whatever your cap hit is. That so in Evander Kane's case, that five million dollars, 
that's paid out over the course of the season. And then the the signing bonus is on July 1 of the July 1 is when you get your lump sum. And then your salary is paid out over the course of the season, week to week or biweekly, however you set it up with your team. You're, I, I, I'm not getting into the minutia. You pay taxes in all the different states when you get paid, whatever. The point is, they're not going to put a salary cap on the playoff rosters because of that reason. That's why there isn't one right now. And then number two, and this is the part people don't want to accept. Their favorite team is going to want to take advantage of this. If your team, if the Oilers are in this position like they are right now, they might need to use this. And I'm going to read you a quote from The Athletic that was written earlier this year at the meeting of the general manager's executive committee. Quote, general managers do not have an appetite to revise the long-term injured reserve rules at this time. It was discussed for 90 seconds during the executive committee meeting in spring of 2024, and the general managers moved on. It is important to note, these are the rules for long-term injured reserve. You may remove an injured player who will miss at least 10 games and 24 days from the active roster. Once a player is on long-term injured reserve, his team can exceed the salary cap by the amount of the player's contract. To get placed on long-term injured reserve, the NHL must get medical reports from lo- when a player goes on long-term injured reserve from a pl- from a roster, and then the NHL monitors that situation. Officially, the NHL's position is that you submit paper, you submit medical documentation for the injury, the treatment, and the recovery period. The NHL feels that this process, the way they have it currently constructed, is acceptable. I I go back and forth on this, and you heard me just say it a minute ago, and I'm going to reiterate it now. I understand a lot of people don't like this, but the stakeholders, the general managers, the owners, they want this there just in case they themselves need it. And the Oilers are in that situation right now. We're going to talk about Evander Kane, LTIR, the money, all of that in the next segment and the third segment. But you got to remember, it's not about what's fair. It's about what are the rules. The rules are set up in the way they are for a reason. And I I made this analogy yesterday when I was talking with Haley Simon of Lockdown Blues and we were talking about it from a Blues and Oilers perspective back and forth. It's just like fighting. As long as the general managers think fighting has value, they think it's part of the game, they're not going to change the rules. The general managers want it. It's staying. General managers like having long-term injured reserve as an option for roster management reasons. Most teams dip into long-term injured reserve during the course of a season. I believe this past season, 17 teams used long-term injured reserve at a various point in, at various points of the season. And this isn't just to facilitate trade deadline things. This might be to facilitate a call-up. If you have an injured player and you're close to the salary cap ceiling and you want to call up some AHL guys to fill out your roster to carry you know, 14 forwards as opposed to 13 or you want to carry eight defensemen or maybe you need a third goalie, you would put that player who's going to be out the 24 days, uh, excuse me, yeah, the 24 days or to end 10 games on LTIR, you submit your paperwork, NHL says yes or whatever. And that's it. This is not just for the Lightning, the Golden Knights, the Blackhawks. More likely than not, it it might be for the Oilers. And we're going to talk about that next coming up on this edition of Locked on Oilers. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. 
eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available for U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out the Locked On NHL podcast. Locked On NHL provides you with a national perspective on all things NHL each and every day with national experts and local insights on every team in the league. Available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shameless plug on today, on Thursday's edition of Locked On NHL, Hunter Hodes and I power rank the top 10 defensemen in the league. We both went to bat very strongly for Evan Bouchard. So if you want to get a gauge of where experts think Evan Bouchard is at, today's episode of Locked On NHL is for you. So moving along our conversation today, we talked about the examples, Patrick Kane in Chicago, Kucherov in Tampa Bay, Mark Stone in Vegas. The Oilers are putting a lot of faith in Evander Kane. And I mean that for a few reasons. Number one, you heard what I just said. The player needs to the player and the team submit their paperwork to the league. They review it, they say, okay, this is the treatment, this is the recovery period, this is an estimate of when this player is going to be eligible to return. And now, this is going to sound a little disrespectful, but Evander Kane is not the type of player who is going to play ball. He is not somebody that is going to put the team before himself. He has consistently shown his stops in other places, whether it's Buffalo, it's Winnipeg, it's San Jose. It's about Evander Kane. And based on reports, Evander Kane has spent, since the playoffs ended, June, July, August, where we are now, he has spent that time rehabbing and getting physical therapy. He has been getting treatment for his hip. He did not get a surgical or a medical procedure. He has tried to rehab it and avoid surgery so that he would be able to come back whenever the season did start. And this presents a conundrum. Number one, you don't know if Evander Kane is going to be ready for opening night. Number two, if he has spent his entire offseason preparing for the season to start normally, that would lead you to believe that he doesn't think he needs surgery. And I'm not saying this is going to be a Jack Eichel situation where the team is going to say, hey, Evander, you need to get surgery. And Evander Kane's going to say, well, no, I want to get this. Tr- I want to do this instead. And we're going to get to an impasse that's ultimately going to lead to a trade for a few reasons. Number one, he has a full no move clause. Number two, his contract is not good. Teams are not going to be willing to take it on. Evander Kane is not Jack Eichel. Evander Kane is not 23 years old. He's not entering his prime. He's older. He's dinged up. He's had a variety of injuries over the last few years. And now, as we sit here, it massively, massively would benefit the Oilers from a roster construction perspective if Evander Kane got surgery. Are the Oilers going to be able to convince Evander Kane, who has spent the last two and a half months rehabbing his hip, which is reportedly what the injury is, to forsake all of that time he has spent getting ready to, in theory, be ready for the start of the regular season, to get surgery because it's kind of what the team needs him to do. And I will point out, even if the Oilers are able to get a Vander Kane's contract onto long-term injured reserve, that is not going to solve all of their issues right now. A Vander Kane's cap hit is $5.125 million. That is not paying for both Broberg and Holloway. Okay, it's not. It is it, mathematically the contracts the Blues offered those guys, it is not going to work out. When you look at the state of the Oilers roster, you very quickly are getting to an impasse. The Oilers only have a handful of guys that they are even able to move right now that, they, that they'd that they want to move. Sure, you could move Ekholm or McDavid or Dreisaitl or Hyman or Nugent Hopkins. You could move a good player. I'm sure you could find a way to make those trades work to facilitate keeping Broberg and Holloway. The problem is... The Oilers need more cap space. We've spent a lot of time this summer talking about this, the various paths, and there is not a consensus right now 
in the media with what they are going to do. And, and you heard me allude to this in the first segment, talking about when the Golden Knights acquired Jack Eichel and they had Mark Stone on LTIR. Even if Evander Kane is willing to get surgery, the hip surgery or whatever lower body injury he's dealing with, he gets that surgery. There is no guarantee that A, he's going to miss the entire regular season, and B, that the flexibility they get from putting him on LTIR is going to have the total desired impact. Because like I was reading in The Athletic today, one of the hypotheticals. So let's say you put Evander Kane on LTIR the whole season. That's $5.125 million. You're still over the cap because you're you're over the cap right now as we sit here by about 800,000. That's fine. You're allowed to go 10% over up until opening night. You take 5.125 million off. You put the Broberg 4.6 and you take let me get it right to be sure. Broberg is 4.58 million and then Holloway is 2.29. 4.5 and 2.2. That is more than 5.125. I'm not very good at math, but I know that much. That means the Oilers would need to waive a player down to the AHL. They would probably need to send one of those bottom six forwards, whether it's Corey Perry or Connor Brown or Derek Ryan, or if it's Joshua Brown instead, and then they could make it work. But the problem with that is If one of those guys gets hurt and you will have injuries over the course of a season, you cannot bank on, oh, we're going to stay healthy all year. It's fine. The Oilers run the risk of running into the situation that Vegas did that first year Eichel got there or what happened to the Rangers two years ago when they tried to acquire Patrick King. They were over the salary cap so they could only dress 16, 17 skaters as opposed to 18 for one or two games. You can get away with that. I don't think it's a good idea. I wouldn't really recommend baking that into your plan for building your roster, but you can do it. The problem is if that's going to be the Oilers situation the entire season where you're not going to be able to really move guys up and down, you're not going to be able to make AHL call-ups because the way your cap is allocated, and that's after putting Evander Kane on LTIR, this becomes a lot more difficult. And I, I we talked about it with Haley yesterday. Without Broberg, that defense is ugly. Ekholm Bouchard, great. They're probably the first or second best first pair in the entire NHL. When the Avalanche play Makar and Tays together, they're better. I have no problem saying that. After that, I think there's a strong argument for Ekholm and Bouchard. But after that, when we're talking about the Oilers, if it's we're going back to Nurse and CeCe and then Kulak and Joshua Brown or Troy Stetcher, that's not really appetizing. You saw what the Oilers looked like with Philip Broberg on their defense, and it still wasn't good enough against Florida. You're going to subtract Philip Broberg, and then you're going to bank on Troy Stetcher, Joshua Brown, or somebody with minimal NHL experience. That's not really enticing, and that's going to – ramp up the workload for guys in that in the top end of their defense do you really want more darnell nurse or cody cc minutes and yes i do understand that the oilers could move cody cc if they wanted to where they're going to get another top four defenseman from and again moving cody cc is not going to pay for both broberg and holloway i think the oilers are going to find a way to make holloway work because that number is not on that number is uh, is bad but it's all it is a little more workable. It's not as unpalatable as Broberg getting 4.58, which is just Philip Broberg with his less than 100 games of NHL experience at absolute most is maybe worth 1.4 or 1.5 million. 4.6 million is preposterous for somebody with that sample size. But we got to take one more quick break. We'll be right back and we'll wrap up today's episode, figuring out what the Oilers lineup could look like and figuring out where the Oilers go from here. It's summer. That means barbecues, the beach, a glizzy or two, and of course, concerts and baseball. If you're like me, you're trying to soak up the last bit of summer, going to the Met game today, going to Kenny Chesney on Saturday, you have got to go check in with our friends over at game time. I only place 
I buy tickets to go to games. I go to a lot of baseball games. I'm cl- get, I'm closing in on my 20th baseball game of the season this year. I bought tickets to every single game from game time and features their app features some of the best tools in the ticket buying business things like zone deals where you save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats all in pricing where you toggle that on up front and there are no surprise fees at checkout seat views where you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy if you're going to a baseball game like i am you want to see balls and strikes you want to be able to get a feel for the strike zone you want to see what the view looks like from your seat the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference and game time ticket coverage where your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you to everybody who's hanging out on this Thursday edition of Locked On NHL. So, I said it with yes on yesterday's episode with Haley, and I'll reiterate it right now. I think the Oilers are going to match on Holloway. They're going to let Broberg walk, and they're going to eat take their medicine on the back end this year to start the regular season. It is going to be ugly. No Broberg, more Nurse, more CC. It is going to be difficult. And one thing I do want to point out here. After Bouchard, Broberg and Holloway, two youngest guys that were going to definitely make the roster to start the season next year. When you're a team that's old like the Oilers are, you need to matriculate guys from the AHL up to your NHL roster for two reasons. Number one, they're cheaper. They're cost efficient. They're cost controlled. They're on entry level or restricted free agent contracts. That keeps the cost down. And then number two, they have room to improve. There's the always the possibility you get the crazy season. You know, Nuge break, breaking 100 points two years ago. Hyman breaking 50 goals this past season. Maybe Nuge goes for 40 tucks next year. Maybe Hyman goes for 50 again. Maybe Dry Seidel or McDavid gets close to 160, 170 points. Maybe Bouchard can be a 100-point defenseman like Eric Carlson was. But for the most part, the Oilers don't have a lot of room for improvement from the guys that are currently on their team. And if you want to think about it a little differently, if you want to say, but that's not really true because they just replaced Ryan McLeod with Jeff Skinner. That That's better. And th- they just replaced Victor Arv- They just replaced Evander Kane with Victor Arvidsson. That's better. You can't think about it like that because it's a range of outcomes. Talent-wise, yes. Jeff Skinner, more talented than Ryan McLeod. Victor Arvidsson, I would say, is a better hockey player right now than Evander Kane is. That does not necessarily mean they're going to perform that way. I would take that bet that Jeff Skinner is going to have more goals and assists than Holloway or or Evander Kane, and same thing for Arvidsson versus McLeod, Holloway, any of the guys that were in the bottom six last year. I I would not that that's not a crazy guess. That's nothing. That's not an insult. That's just the, that's the facts. Of, we're to LA Knight. If you're a wrestling fan, those are just the facts of life. But if you're banking on guys maintaining career averages, you need to have room somewhere. Maybe it's Stuart Skinner. You know, maybe Stuart Skinner puts together like a 915 save percentage season in the regular season and is like eighth in goal saved above expected. That could solve the Oilers' defensive issues. I that is not impossible. But you like having young guys sprinkled throughout your lineup because it gives you more room. And we talked about the range of outcomes. Like an average Zach Hyman season in Edmonton would probably be about 30 goals. For the team, most guys on the team are going to fall close to their career averages. There will always be outliers. That's how statistics work. But for the most part, everybody's going to fall relatively close to what they usually do. That's how big samples work. Over the course of a career, a player falls into a box. They shoot this percentage. They take this many shots. And then the more of those seasons they have, the more precise you can be in your average estimate. So without Evander Kane, it's not on. It's not impossible. 
You take Evander Kane out and you're looking at Corey Perry probably sliding up into your top nine. And that's not great, but it's it's doable. Right now, Daily Faceoff still has Dylan Holloway and Philip Roberg listed on the Oilers roster because technically they are Oilers until next week, until the offer sheet contracts are finalized and either the Oilers match and they stay or they decline to match and the draft picks go through. Technically, they are still on the Oilers for the record. But th- th- that's very much the kid at the sleepover who says, well, don't you mean today because it's past midnight, even though that kid is very annoying. Technically speaking, yes. But if you look at the Oilers roster, they can withstand losing Dylan Holloway a lot more than they can stand losing Philip Broberg. The Oilers were banking a lot on Philip Broberg, and it was a gamble. There is no guarantee that Philip Broberg was going to play well on his offside playing with Darnell Nurse every night. And that is the level of desperation, frankly, the Oilers had for Broberg to really solidify and establish himself that they were going to play him on his offside with not a lot of experience at the NHL level to begin with with a player who has struggled for the better part of the last two seasons. And this deal, the, these offer sheets, really put the screws to the Oilers. It really puts the Oilers in a difficult situation. And if I were in Stan Bowman's shoes, I would be trying to talk Evander Kane into going on LTIR, and I would be telling one of those bottom six forwards, whether it's Perry, whether it or, or whether it's Perry, Whoever you want to talk about in that bottom six, whichever guy you want to talk about, whether it's Derek Ryan, if it's Connor Brown, if it's Corey Perry, I'm going to have to have a sit down with one of those guys and say, I have to waive you. You have to go to the AHL. I can probably get you back up here at some point later in the season. But right now, I need to keep Philip Broberg so that when you come back in the playoffs, we can push for a Stanley Cup. Without Philip Broberg, we cannot push for a Stanley Cup. That's how I would try and sell this to the guys on the team. The guys on the team are not obligated to do what's right for the team. This all might be for moot. Evander Kane might tell the Oilers to take a hike. I'm healthy enough. I don't need surgery. I'll be at training camp. And then it's going to get dicey. If Evander Kane is not willing to play ball with long-term injured reserve and getting surgery. The Oilers are going to be in a position where they're going to have to trade away guys they don't want to trade away. If they trade away CeCe, for all of CeCe's warts, he's probably better than a 7th or 8th defenseman that's going to replace him. And that's the conundrum the Oilers face. They're going to have to subtract from a team that was very flimsily held together. It's talented. It's a nice roster on paper, but it is flimsy and it is not foundationally solid. But that will just about do it for today's edition of Locked on Oilers. So if you could be so kind, please subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. If you are listening on Apple or Spotify, please leave the show a five-star review. If you are watching over on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and hit the alarm bell so you get a notification whenever new content goes live. We're 20 away from 1,400. We are making progress here, people. Let me know. Do you think Evander Kane's going to be willing to go on long-term injured reserve and help out the team? I don't think so. And before we get out of here, thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On NHL podcast where the season never ends and provides national expertise with the local perspective. You can find the link to Locked On NHL in the description so you don't need to search part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Until then, let's go Oilers.